Hello guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today we are going to revise the important topics that are coming under unit number 9 in CSCR net examination friends. Okay. So first topic is types of algae. So algae are classified into 5 types. Iglinophyta, Blazerariophyta, Pheophyta, Chlorophyta, Rhodophyta. Okay, so first chlorophyll pigment. Chlorophyll A and B are present in Euglenophyta and Chlorophyta. Whereas here chlorophyll A and C are present in this Blazerariophyta and Pheophyta. Okay, whereas with respect to red algae, the chlorophyll A as well as chlorophyll D are present. Okay, so with respect to red algae, it is made up of the cell wall of this red algae is made up of cellulose and alginic acid. Okay, the other pigment present is Fucosanthin is present in Pheophyta, Beta character is present in Chlorophyta, Phycobilin is present in Rhodophyta. With respect to carbohydrate food reserve, Taramylin is present in Euglenophyta, Leucosin and Manitol are present in Blazeriophyta, Lamarin is a carbohydrate food reserve that is present in brown algae, and Starch is present in Chlorophyta, and Fluoridin Starch is present in Rhodophyta. Next, insect order and their characteristics. So, here I just listed on only 5 insect order that are very important with respect to CSA and it examination. Orthoptera. Example include grasshopper, locust and cricket. So, the insects belong to this order have an elongated membranous wings with a net like venation and they have a long and slender abdomen and the compound types will be large and the fore wings will be narrow and the hind wings will be uh, folded in form and they have a metamorphosis which is incomplete in nature. And the example include aphids, bugs and leaf copper. They, they, these insects are small body and the sucking mouth parts will be present and the wings will be narrow. Okay. And with respect to coleoptera, example include your beetle which have a scleroids, four wing, membranous skin wing and chewing mouth part. Next is diptera which is include your mosquitoes. Okay. So, these insects which belong to the soil will have a two wings and they have a large eye and the antenna will be very small and the mouth part will be used for sucking. So, just like your mosquito will suck your blood and hen wings will be evolved into advanced mechanosensory organ called halters. So, this is what the halter, it is an advanced mechanosensory organ. Okay. So, the next last thing is that hymnoptera, they include, so example include bees, ants and bats. Okay. So, they have a four wing structure and the mouth parts is used for chewing and licking. This insects have a complete metamorphosis. So, the third thing is that human diseases in the causative organism. So, first disease is African sleeping sickness which is caused by Tropinosoma breezy and the vector which is helping this particular transmission is the disease fly. And the next disease is Chagas disease which is also called as American sleeping sickness which is caused by Tropinosoma cruzi and the vector is the triatomic bug. And third disease is elephantiasis which is caused by Ucheria bancofte. And the fourth disease is Lyme disease which is caused by Borilla bug. Dorferi. And the fifth disease is scarlet fever which is caused by Streptococcus pyrogens. I know this particular at least one question will be asked from this particular PPT alone friends. It will be asked either in the form of match the following friends. So, please pay attention while reading the content that is has been given in this particular presentation. And the next scarlet fever is caused by Streptococcus pyrogens. Typhus is caused by Rickettsia provasi. And the coronic gastritis is caused by Helicobacter pyroli. And the Lesmaniasis which is also called as black black leg disease or Kalazar which is caused by Lesmania donovani and the vector for transmission is the sand fly belonging to this filio metabus okay the next topic is with respect to larval form of animal so here I had given a fly phylum and the larval form of animal belonging to this phylum so first is porifera the larval form include parenchyma or amphibastra so in the animals that belong to this phylum the larval stage is called as parenchyma and amphibastra cindarians phylum animals will have it called as planula or actina cytinophora it is cydipit and platyhelminthus the larval form includes muller miracidium and syracaria and with respect to anilida the animals which animal or organism which is coming under this phylum that is your earthworm in the larval form they are called the trochophore larva or nectochieta and mollusca also trochophore larva urochordata it is called the stadpole and hemichordata in the larval form they are called the stonaria with respect to crustacean there are different names napoli zeo cypris and the shrimp which is also belong to this particular crustacean phylum in the larval form it is called as mysis and crabs it is called as megalops and with respect to la lobster the larval Larval form is called as pleurulus. With respect to echinodermata, the larval form it is called as pylosome and pleutus, bipinaria, brachiolaria, do, doli, 
low laria okay sorry if i didn't pronounce them correctly please forgive me friends okay so the next thing is topic number 5 which include anamox bacteria so this anamox bacteria one question has been asked in csa net examination so this bacteria is responsible for 30 to 50 percentage of di nitrogen production in ocean and they belong to pla pollen to mycetes phylum and they have a ability to combine either nitrate or nitrate as well as ammonia to produce nitrogen gas and they are obligate anaerobic hemolithotrophs and they live in the temperature ranging from minus 2 to 43 degree celsius okay and they survive at a ph of 6.7 to 8.3 and they produce a metabolite intermediate called hydrazine and the cell wall is made up of protein and the particular bacteria don't have no peptidoglycan as well as they don't have no outer membrane next topic is organism of conservation con concern okay so the icun list red list has grouped the organism based on rate of decline population size area of geo geographic distribution as well as the degree of population distribution the organism will be coming under any of the particular category it include nine category friends so you should not change this order okay sometimes a question will be asked so first thing is not evaluated next thing data deficient third list is least concern fourth list is near threatened fifth is vulnerable fifth is endangered sixth is critically endangered seventh is extinct in wild and eighth is extinct okay so till day they were analyzed is totally 142500 species have been assessed by this icun levels next here are the few example of extinct animal friends so again with respect to extinct animal also question has been repeatedly asked i had given the uh, scientific name also so please pay attention to read the scientific name friends so the animals that are extinct most widely and uh, asked questions will be coming from this particular thing that is dinosaur woolly mammoth dodo west african black rhinos baji white dolphin tasmanian tiger sabri tooth tiger irish elk okay so these are the uh, animals that have been extinct these are widely spoken animals so that's the reason and please pay attention to read and mug up the scientific name next if a species is considered to be rare if it exhibit any one of the following attribute first thing it should occur naturally in a narrow geographical area next occupy only one or few specialized habitat next they form only small population in range next thing many rare and endemic species exhibit one or more of the following 10 attribute which makes them especially especially prone to extinction that is their geographic area will become narrow or single and there will be only one or few in the population and they have a small population size at the same time the genetic variability will be very much less and there will be over expo exploitation by human and the population will be decline in with respect to population size and the reproduction potential will be very low and they need a specialized ecological niche to survive and the growth will be uh, they will be generally uh, the growth requires a stable as well as near constant environment so environment should be stable and constant and this animal should be present in a high trophic status as well as a life span should be very much small next with respect to world life day uh, 2022 that is in this particular day they have given five critically endangered animal that are threatened due to human activities again i had uh, uh, please remember the scientific name first is of african forest elephant sunda tigers vancuta orangutan how how bill ski title so these are the animal that had they had been identified as a critical endangered in 2022 years soon they will be extinct next this is a category friends so critically endangered endangered vulnerable all are coming in a threatened species so based on decline in population size respect to critically endangered are those animals that are coming under this particular category there it will be less than 90 percentage there will be decline in population and endangered just 50 to 70 percentage and with respect to vulnerable 30 to 50 percentage the population will become had been declined respect to extent of occurrence critically endangered less than 100 km endangered or those animal that are being uh, coming under this endangered group will be the extent of occurrence will be less than 5000 vulnerability is less than 20000 respect to area of occupancy critically endangered the area of occupancy is less than 10 km respect to endangered it is less than 500 km respect to vulnerable it is less than 2000 km respect to mature individual the respect to critically endangered organism there will be only 250 or less than 250 mature individual okay endangered there will be less than 2500 with respect to vulnerable that will be 10000 mature individuals will be there 
next we are going to study about the classification of fungus before that you should know about mycorrhiza it is a mutuality association between fungus and root plant next lichen it is a mutuality association present in between photosynthetic algae and fungi okay so now we can come into fungus classification they are classified into four type uh, criteodio mycota zygomycota ascomycota basidio mycota habitat for all them they survive in a terrestrial habitat whereas this first group of this fungus belong to aquatic habitat ploidy level so this particular first group is only diploid in nature whereas zygo ascomycota belong to monoploid whereas this basidio mycota they are the ploidy level of basidio mycota is dicaryotic monoploid respect to motile phase is present only in chytiodi mycota and it's absent in all other fungi sexual spore in respect to zygomycota is zygospore ascomycota it is ascospore and respect to basidio mycota is called as basidio spore asexual spore uh, this particular first group it is holographic respect to zygomycota the asexual spore is called as sporangiospore with respect to ascomycota the asexual spore is conidia with respect to basidio mycota it's called as basidio sorry asexual uh, spore of basidio mycota it is arthrospore example of the zygomycota include black bread mold and ascomycota it is n casa neurospora casa and with respect to basidio mycota barrier mushroom rust fungi and smut fungi are coming here next is parasites and pathogens of crops okay so first disease name is fungal foliar disease it is also uh, the group of disease include black spot of rose powdery mildew downy mildew brown patch and oak leaf blister are caused by fungus belonging to genus of botryosphera and other fungus group include phomopsis okay in addition to that some other species like pythium phytophthora armillaria species are more important for causing this root rots next bacterial so this phytoplasma is an unusual group of bacteria where they don't have cell wall at all what this bacteria they will inhabit the phloem of plant and they will associated with a severe plant disease and the next group of bacterium which is also an unusual sort of bacterium called xylelia fastidiosa it causes a bacterial scotch disease and pice disease in grapes okay and this particular bacteria is spread by leaf hoppers so last or uh, nematode disease is called root knot nematode belonging to meloidogyne okay it's causing a most destructive plant parasite nematodes okay the so class two fungus in a genus apicia is co most commonly coming south red disease in plants so these are the important parasites and pathogens affecting crops next thing i am going to study about alpha beta and gamma taxonomy so alpha taxonomy is only naming and characterization of species the classification in this particular taxonomy is based on morphological group beta tag Beta taxonomy deals with arranging of species in their natural system of category. Like the classification with respect to beta taxonomy is based on anatomical, cytological, morphological, genetical, and ecological. Whereas gamma taxonomy is purely based on the classification is based by analyzing the microscopic and biochemical characteristics. So this gamma taxonomy generally concerns the evolutionary history of an organism, intraspecific variation, as well as this gamma taxonomy deals with the interpretation of organic diversity next biocontrol agent so biocontrol agents are nothing but it's a use of natural efficient strains of any microorganism or modified organism which reduce the incident of disease uh, disease that are caused by plant pathogen so most commonly used biocontrol strains include trichoderma fusarium and bacillus bacillus thuringiensis so i just given based on classification with respect to bacteria generally bacillus genus and agrobacterium are generally used with respect to virus nuclear polyhedrosis virus baculovirus granulosis virus or b generally employed as this biocontrol agent fungi the genus belong to en entomophagia breviria neozygids are being used in fungus as a biocontrol agent okay the trichodermas is again a fungal group that is generally widely used for biocontrol agent in organic form next we are going to study about taxonomy so this hierarchy of biological classification so this is an actual hierarchy of biological classification of any living organism so life domain kingdom phylum class order family genus and species in more detail i can explain you kingdom is classified into phylum subphylum superclass class subclass cohort order subfamily superfamily family subfamily tribe so tribe will be above the level of genus level below the level of family all know tribe 
tribes will be generally living in the forest areas okay so amazon tribes like that and all uh, you can able to google more about this tribe the interesting facts about tribes friends so genus subgenus species subspecies so one point the csr has asked a question with regard to order alone friends so that's the reason i just listed over in this revision series so next we are going to study about the concept of monopoly polyphyly polyphyly paraphyly so monophyletic taxon is the one that includes a group of organism that are came from a single ancestor whereas this polyphyletic taxon is composed of unrelated organism that are descended from more than one ancestor so here i had given three different types so first we'll study about monophyletic monophyletic group so please pay time to copy this diagram in your revision notebook because one time csr asked question with respect to diagram also friends okay so monophyletic group is a taxon that consists of most recent common ancestor and all of the descendants okay whereas this polyphyletic group is a taxon that consists of unrelated organism who are from a different recent common ancestor this polyphyletic group does not include recent common ancestor okay so here you can able to see for this e taxon the ancestor is c whereas for this g taxon the ancestor is f okay so they are two unrelated organism that are coming from different taxon so here you can able to see in monophyletic group all the descendant or all the recent common ancestor have been included whereas in this polyphyletic group they didn't include the recent common ancestor so that's the reason this group lacks a most common descent ancestor and the third division is paraphyletic group paraphyletic group is a taxon that consists of most recent common ancestor and some of the descendant okay so they have only some of the descendants so this particular group here you can able to see they have a common ancestor and they, but they didn't include this b taxon from b c taxon f taxon has emerged they didn't include nothing para they only include recent ancestor and some of its descendant so this monophyletic taxon is grouped based on synapomorphy i'll explain you what is mean by that this polyphyletic group is based or grouped based on convergent evolution and paraphyletic group it is based on simplicyomorphy okay this monophyletic group and paraphyletic group are a naturally occurring taxon whereas this polyphyletic group it is completely an unnatural assemblage of organism example of monophyletic group include mammalia apes gymnosperm insects there is example of this polyphyletic group include dinosaur fish gymnosperm plants invertebrate and protists whereas example of this paraphyletic group is us yes marine mammals bipedal mammals flying vertebrates trees and algae will be coming under this paraphyletic group okay so last topic is comparative anatomy friends so please the each word is very much important so first thing is homoplasy is an inherited pattern that two or more organism portray a similar phenotypic characteristics okay they have a similar phenotypic characteristics but they didn't derive from a common ancestor the ancestor will be different as a result they don't have a genetic similarity or they have a very minute genetic similarity genetically they won't be similar this pattern is observed as a result of convergent evolution example includes a wings of insects wings of birds wings of bat all are used for flying but they are called homoplasty which mean they will be similar in form but for insect there is a separate origin for birds there is a separate origin for birds there is a separate origin and next type of inheritance pattern is homology which is inheritance pattern where the phenotypic traits of two or more organism they have a show a co common future and also they derive from a same ancestor as a result they have a resemblance in their genetic composition so this pattern is observed by divergent evolution so homoplasy convergent evolution homology divergent evolution so example includes four limb is present in vertebrates okay so whereas wings of birds and uh, birds and bats arms of primates four legs of four leg vertebrates like dogs and crocodile are are deriving from a same ancestral structure called tetrapod structure they have a same and similar ancestral structure okay so this is what the thing friends wings bat they, they belong to they came from a they came from a same ancestral origin called tetrapod structure so this is with respect to apomorphy pelisiomorphy apomorphy means advanced or derived character so here you can able to see from the common this is white color they have a advanced character okay so nowadays the students we are having a 
we are having everything uh, we are having a different pattern of studying itself which is not present in earlier generation uh, i can say you example of that whereas pelisiomorphy is a primitive and ancestral character there is no change in their character so these are the primitive and ancestral character that is pelisiomorphy that is eating with our hands or walking with our legs this are primitive and ancestral character okay next thing is this apomorphy is classified into two types odd apomorphy and syn apomorphy odd odd apomorphy odd means alone odd apomorphy means it is a unique derived character state and the syn apomorphy means shared derived character state okay so let me explain you with this particular diagram friends so this is a is a common ancestor friends so here you can able to see c is a example of apomorphy what is mean by apomorphy it is a odd means alone it is a unique derived character state so this c is apomorphic because it is not not present in ancestor character it has been a unique character that is present in from the ancestor to next generation next thing is that pelisiomorphy what is mean by pelisiomorphy so it is a primitive and ancestor character so a is a primitive and ancestor character because it is present in this generation it is present in this group it is present in all groups so there is no change from primitive character whereas this e is odd apomorphy sorry friends with respect to apomorphy i just mentioned you advanced or derived character so c is advanced or derived character whereas in primitive form there is no c that is the c individual is not present whereas and later on while well, developing c has been coming so that's the reason why they are called as apomorphy so this e is odd apomorphy odd means alone so they are present only in this generation there is no transmission of e to some other taxon so they are present only in this particular taxon character okay the next this particular sin sin up apomorphy which i said it is a derived character stage so c is called the sin apomorphic character whereas from this c it has been transferred it is a, it's a shared derived character it has been shared in all generation next thing is your sin pelisiomorphy so a is called the sin pelisiomorphy what is mean by sin pelisiomorphy so sin pelisiomorphy refer to one ancestral character or ancestral trait that is shared by two taxa that are different origin so here you can able to see a and a okay so this they are having a different thing and here they are having a different thing okay so these are the important topic with respect to unit number 9 friends hope this will be very much helpful so in the next video i'll definitely update uh, with the revision series of unit number 7 that is system physiology animal thank you friends if you didn't subscribe to my youtube channel please click the subscription button and please lend your support for the growth of this channel thank you friends